the first car is, is a sports car, not because we think the world lacks for a sports car, uh, but because it is the right entry point for the market. If you have a new technology, the right place to enter is high unit cost, low unit volume. Uh, just as you know, when, when, a, when a new cell phone come out, comes out or a new, uh, a new laptop or, or some, some new thing, uh, it tends to be expensive at first uh, because they're, they're figuring out all the issues and it takes time to optimize. And then over time, that, that technology will become uh, cheaper and cheaper. And so we have no serious competition. Not, Not presently. Who's chasing you? Well, uh, if you mean chasing and, have, and has a serious chance of catching, then I, I think none that I'm aware of. Thank you so much for being with us here at Wired Science. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I need to first lay a, a little bit of a foundation here. Two days into your physics program at Stanford University, you quit school to start a company called Zip2, a media company. Right. Uh, which you sold a few years later for a paltry $307 million. Then four years later, um, eBay buys PayPal. Is that correct? A company yes. that you established or helped to establish as one I'll of the creators? With a few others, yeah. Um, and now you've <coughs> taken those two enormous successes and you've set your ambition on space. How did you go from online payment systems to building a spaceship, essentially? Well, uh, when I graduated from college, there were three areas that I thought would be most impactful to the future of humanity. The three were the internet, space exploration, and uh, and, and then changing the economy from a mine and burn hydrocarbon based economy to one which is solar electric, which I think is going to be the primary but not exclusive uh, means of uh, energy and transportation. Here on Earth, you are establishing uh, a presence, certainly, uh, with Tesla Motors. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. This is an electric car company, correct? Right. And this is, no, this is no hybrid car you could buy on a car lot. This thing goes from zero to 60 in four seconds. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Zero to 60 in under four seconds. It's faster. A better acceleration than any uh, Porsche currently in production and any Ferrari except the Enzo. Um, and it's uh, twice the energy efficiency of a Prius. But, you know, there's something I should point out about Tesla, which is uh, I, we didn't, you know, Tesla is, is the first car is, is a sports car, not because we think the world lacks for a sports car, uh, but because it is the right entry point for the market. If you have a new technology, the right place to enter is high unit cost, low unit volume. Uh, just as, you know, when, when, a, when a new cell phone come out, comes out or a new, uh, a new laptop or, or some, some new thing, uh, it tends to be expensive at first uh, because they're, they're figuring out all the issues and it takes time to optimize. And then over time, that, that technology will become uh, cheaper and cheaper. And so the Model 2 of, of Tesla, uh, and maybe I'm leaping ahead here, but no. model, model 2 of Tesla is a $49,000 four-door, five-passenger sedan. Um, and that's, uh, that's going to be obviously a much broader market segment uh, that, that, that can make use of that car. And then Model 3 is intended to be around a $30,000 price point. Uh, and so that's, that's really affordable by, by almost everyone uh, who's, who, who's, who can buy a new car. So the idea is to drive to mass market as rapidly as possible, uh, but at, uh, only at the pace at which the technology 
uh, matures. So the interest in Tesla is, is not from the perspective of you know the world needs another car company. It's more from uh, the perspective of we have a very important environmental problem that needs to be addressed, which is driven by the, the burning of fossil fuels and uh, the, the increasing CO2 concentration in the atmosphere and, gl and global climate change, which I think is going to be one of the most significant issues of, of the 21st century. And the only way to, to really get around that, in my view, is, is, is really with an electric vehicle. Uh, and then you need to pair that up with uh, a, a, a zero emission power generation method, such as uh, solar power. Mm -hmm. I think is, solar power is going to be a really big deal. Have we screwed it up so badly here on this planet that our only hope is to build a new civilization out there? No, not at all. I, actually, I'm quite, I'm quite optimistic about the future of humanity on Earth. You are? Yeah, absolutely. So what is the benefit to humanity then to inhabit Mars, which is really what is an ambition of yours? Well, I think if you consider two paths, one where we're forever confined to Earth and the other where we're a space frank civilization uh, out exploring the stars, I think the latter is far more exciting mm -hmm. um, and will result in a, a richer and, and more diverse uh, human experience. How can you do that better uh, than NASA? Well, uh, well f you know, we're, NASA is a customer of ours, so there's a, I think a confusion in the public mind that, that perhaps a company like SpaceX is competing with NASA, mm -hmm. but, but in fact, NASA is a customer of ours. So we're actually uh, providing services to NASA, launch services, uh, and when, when the shuttle retires in 2010, uh, so starting in 2011, uh, SpaceX's uh, rocket will replace the space shuttle in servicing the space station with astronauts and, uh, and cargo transportation. The name of your rocket ship is called the Falcon Explorer, is that it? Well, the, the Falcon 9. The Falcon 9. Yeah, is, it's is the rocket. And, and then the, space, the spaceship is Dragon. Dragon. Yeah, so the Falcon 9 rocket lifts the Dragon spaceship, and the Dragon spaceship is what goes to the space station and then returns to Earth. So it transports the Falcon as almost cargo, then? So, the, yeah, the, the Falcon 9 is kind of like the, uh, the semi, okay. or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it, 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 it trans, it, it, the Falcon 9 booster rocket takes the Dragon spaceship to space and drops it off. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to the space station, it docks with the space station, uh, transfers astronauts or resupply, you know, cargo, whatever, whatever the case may be, and then the Dragon spacecraft uh, returns to Earth. I, reading some of the speeches that you have given in your, your career, and how old, you're, you mean like the, the you're practically 23 years, you're 23 years old? Is uh, that I'm it? actually 12. You're 12. Yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> you look terrific. But you have said that we got lost along the way with our space program. What did you mean by that? Right, I think I think I, I, that was uh, in some of my congressional testimony. I, I gave a few yes. speeches to, to Congress. Well, I, what I mean by that is, in 1969, we were able to go to the moon, and here we are, over three decades later, and we can barely get to low Earth orbit. And I think, by any measure, that is a step backwards. Is that for a lack of leadership or technology? I think we made the wrong technological choices, and I think there was also a lack of. Uh, will at the at the, the highest levels of government to take the next step and and uh, go go well at least go at least stay on the moon and perhaps build a, a base there mm -hmm. and, and then go beyond the moon to Mars and if you look at the the news articles in the late 60s early 70s the expectation uh, was that that by now in, in the 21st century we would have a moon base and probably even a Mars base mm -hmm. uh, and and I think if you'd asked anyone at that point in time whether we, we would be Unable to go to the moon and have no and not have been to to Mars, I think they would they would think you're crazy. Do we need a leadership in that realm? Do we need a John F. Kennedy who sets a goal <laughs> for us when he said one one day a man will walk on the moon? Do we need that kind of leadership for this technology to move forward in that big step? I do think it's it's very important that the president uh, set the, the the priority and 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 determine the the goal. Uh, you know, that, that we as a nation will, will aspire to. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the moon is kind of like, it's kind of like uh, the Arctic. I mean, it's just, it's just a very barren place, and, uh, very, very little resources, it's small. Um, it's, not, it's not really a place that we could establish uh, another human civilization. This ambition to explore space. Absolutely. There's an that, entrepreneur. And there's, there's quite a bit yeah. of competition mm -hmm. out there. There's Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin. There's Richard Branson with his Virgin Galactic. Right. Um, and I'm not talking about NASA either. There's Paul Allen. Uh, there's the European Space Agency and Boeing and Lockheed Martin, the Chinese, the Russians, 
let's just throw all of them into the Everyone's same doing it. competitive field. How is <laughs> SpaceX different? How do you think you'll sort of uh, surpass them? Well, you know, you, you've, you've listed a, a wide range of, of entities there, mm -hmm. and I think the differences are... Uh, really different depending upon which one you're referring to. Mm -hmm. the, uh, well, let me ask you this question. Yeah. Who is your competition? We have no serious competition. None? Not presently. Who's chasing you? Well, uh, if you mean chasing and, have, and has a serious chance of catching, then I, I think none that I'm aware of. Uh, and, so and, and that Branson guy is kind of a hack, then. Well, what what uh, Branson is doing, by the way, I'm a great admirer of Branson, uh, is really um, a much smaller technological challenge. So their craft would be suborbital, uh, so it would go to about Mach three. Uh, our craft is orbital; it goes to Mach twenty five, so twenty five times the speed of sound. But that doesn't describe the whole scale of difficulty because the, uh, the energy required to get to those velocities uh, scales as the square of the velocity. So to do what Branson is doing, you need, say, about nine units of energy. To do what we're doing, you need 625 units of energy. The difference is monumental. Uh, and then when you re-enter, re you, you have to burn off all that energy. So, uh, so that doubles the problem, really. So I mean, what Branson is doing from a technological standpoint is building something that can cross the, the English Channel. What we're building is something that can circumnavigate the globe. It's a very different uh, scale of, of, of technological difficulty. I still think what he's doing is great. And by the way, I bought a ticket on, on his effort. You did? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I still think it's great. But it's not, it's not in the same league technologically. So you're not particularly worried? Certainly not about, no, no, certainly not about that, no. Uh, uh, the things that worry me are, are, are we going to make a mistake? Are we, the, 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 the things that can really hurt SpaceX are, I mean, we, our own foolishness, uh, our own errors can, can hurt us, but not, none of the competition that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. So generally, you're worried about what's in front of you, not, not the other guy. In, in fact, you probably don't think about them in terms of the, how they criticize you or what they think about you. I, I don't think, actually, I don't think uh, there's much criticism. I mean, Boeing and Lockheed, of course, they, they would criticize, but... I don't think any of the entrepreneurial guys would, would criticize what we're doing. Um, and it's certainly possible that I think, you know, what, what Jeff Bezos is working on could ultimately, I mean, he, he does have aspirations to get to orbit and beyond. It's just that what they're doing right now is suborbital and at, at the sort of lower technology level. Mm -hmm. What I think about it at SpaceX is really entirely w w what are we doing to ensure that our rocket is, is going to be successful and that we are truly uh, optimizing the, the, the cost uh, and ensuring a higher liability. I mean, that's just a very, very difficult problem. And there's a reason why there's an idiom idiomatic expression about rocket science being hard. Uh, it, it, it really is really hard. So <laughs> rocket science really is rocket science? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks hard, and it's harder than it looks. What's the big goal here? What's the long-term plan? Well, the, the long-term uh, ultimate objective, the, the holy grail, is we would like to help make life multiplanetary. That's really our, what we'd like to do. So establish societies on as many planets as possible? Uh, well, yeah. Well, I think there's only one possibility, but yeah. I mean, even if we can just go from one planet to two, I think that's a pretty big step. And you'll start with? Well, Mars. Mars, Mars? is the only viable planet. A viable planet. Yeah. So it's fair to say you've made a fortune. Yeah, I think so, by you have. any reasonable standard, yeah. And, you know, those who work in science probably understand your trajectory, but there are those who are watching who would think, if I made that money, I'd sit on a beach, I'd drink beer, and I would just watch the sunset, kind of like a Corona beer commercial. Have you ever thought about that as a career option? Uh, you know, I, I find that really pretty boring, so <laughs> that would be torture if I had to do that every day. That would mm -hmm. really be pretty awful for me. Is there something about startup businesses that, that, that really fuels your desire to work? Um, although startups definitely have their highs and lows. And there's a friend of mine who has a good phrase, uh, you know, a startup business is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. What is the criteria that you establish for yourself for a startup? I mean, why one business over another? Yeah. Well, I, for me, it's always about, does, this, does what I'm doing matter? If, if we are successful, uh, d does it matter to the world? And uh, so there are easier ways to make money than starting a rocket company or a 
say, a car company, mm -hmm. um, or, or even when I started an internet company, because when I started the first internet company, uh, nobody had made any money, and it wasn't clear that anyone would make any money. Uh, it was simply from the perspective of the internet being a very important thing and something that needed to be built, and so I wanted to help build it. Well, you touch upon something that's interesting, is that there is a, that benefiting humanity is a very integral part of your criteria, no matter what you're starting up. Yes, absolutely. Really? Not everybody has that as a prime interest. Most no, I, th I think that's, that's probably relatively unusual, although I, there are many people that I know in Silicon Valley for whom that is a significant motivation. You said in your endeavor here to explore space that we are committed to failing in a new way, if nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> what did you mean by that? Just, just, just how it sounds? Well, I mean, we're, we're, I mean, we're committed to succeed, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if we do fail, uh, uh, I would hope that we at least add to the body of knowledge such that those who follow may make fewer mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if Mars were not enough, uh, you, you are busy here <laughs> on Earth. The world is not enough. <laughs> That's right. Where, you, where, where, what, uh, have you no limits, my friend? Uh, Elon Musk, thank you so much right. for being with us at Wired Science.